Hi, I'm Lynn from Lynn's Cake Away and thank you for joining me on my first ever video of me making a cake. Obviously I've made many cakes but this is the first time I've ever recorded myself doing so. So I must apologise, some of this footage isn't the best and often you will see different bits and pieces going slightly wrong where I am very nervous and out of my comfort zone. As you can see here, I'm using a chocolate fudge sponge and a chocolate fudge buttercream that was extremely cold when I first started working with it and therefore was quite tough. But as we move on throughout the cake, you will notice that it is nice and smooth and does warm up quite quickly and is easier to work with. You will also notice that some of this footage is sped up and that is because a cake can sometimes take three to four days to make and that would make a very lengthy video. I wouldn't want to keep you um, on a super long video and bore you half to death with my voice. Here we are doing the crumb coat on the cake. The crumb coat is a very special layer. It catches all the crumbs from the sponge cake and stops it from going into the next layer, in this case the white chocolate ganache. We're using a light blue fondant on the outside of this cake so it's important that the white chocolate ganache is nice and smooth and doesn't have any dark chocolate crumbs in it as these might show through the fondant and ruin the overall design of the cake. I like to spend a fair amount of time on my crumb coat. This is just because it's the first layer and it does help create a smoother next layer and next layer and so on. So if you take your time on your crumb coat and then again on your ganache layer, it does help create a better finish at the end. You will see me going back over and adding buttercream and then scraping it off. And I also use a warm scraper and a warm knife just to give a smooth finish. There is some filming coming up shortly where the cake does go out of shot slightly and I do want to apologise for that. As I said, this is the first time I've ever recorded myself. Um, so there are parts of this video that could be better and I am learning from the experience as I go. Next up, I'm making the chocolate ganache. This is a white chocolate ganache. Um, I did try to show you how many uh, milligrams of cream I use there. It's 300 milligrams of double cream. And then obviously the white chocolate, just mixing that up, slowly warming it. Then it goes onto the cake. As you'll see, I'm using some ganache and plates. These ganache and plates have actually been made for me by my brother. So they are custom sizes that are made specific to my cakes. Um, you can buy these. Um, it's good to do a little bit of research and decide how much ganache you would like on the outside of your cakes. Just levering it up here with the scraper. And then I start filling in all the ganache on the sides. So as you can see, my cake board is at the top. That's because once all this is filled in and smoothed down, the cake will be flipped up the other way to give a nice smooth surface on the top and the cake board on the bottom. I have slowed down a bit of this too because I think this is really lovely and relaxing to watch. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do is covering a cake in ganache because um, yeah, I just find it so relaxing and therapeutic. Slowly go round, fill in all the gaps, smooth it down. If there's any more holes, just repeat. Um, obviously, you're at a different angle to what I was seeing when I was doing it. So please don't be angry at me if I'm missing spots that you can see because I wouldn't have seen them at the time of filming. But don't worry, it does all get done eventually. I'll just leave you to watch that for a moment and have a bit of a break from my voice and I'll join you in the next clip. This part can actually be quite a lengthy process for me because I am a bit of a perfectionist and I think this part is one of the most important parts of cake making. It gives me a completely smooth base to work on um, and so here I've gone back to a trusty warm metal scraper and I'm scraping off all the extra bits that are sticking out from the edges, um, making sure I line up the top and the bottom of the scraper with my ganache plates and going round to scrape as much off as I can to make sure it's perfectly straight. And then once I'm happy that that's all smooth and the best it can be, I pop that to one side to set. Now we're moving into the evening. Um, 
So here I am rolling out the fondant ready to cover the cake. As you can see I've now taken the ganache plates off and I've filled in any gaps um, that were underneath the ganache plates. Sometimes you get a little air pocket in there and it leaves a hole. Just fill those in once I take the ganache plates off and leave that to set before I pop the fondant on. And I'm about to share with you my top tip for covering a cake in fondant and that is to use an acupuncture needle to pop any air bubbles. Um, so I just use a tiny little acupuncture needle, pop the air bubbles and then run my hand over and that gets rid of them. This will stop the air bubbles forming underneath the fondant once it's on the cake and it stops it from ruining your design. Sometimes the air that gets trapped will all collaborate together when the cake settles and it will create a great big bulge of fondant on the edges or on the top. Just sped you up again here, I'm just rolling it out to the size that I need and then I'll pop it over the rolling pin while I tidy up the ganache that's on the cake. Sorry, again it is just out of shot but you can kind of see what I'm doing here. I'm just taking a warm knife and going around the edge just to smooth it all down and make a sharp corner. Tidy up the bottom, just sped this bit up again for you, um, touching up the side and then I use a bit of warm water on my hands to rub all of the edges of the cake and smooth down any extra lumps. And now onto the fondant, obviously it goes over the top of the cake and then I stretch and smooth it down. This fondant does look a bit thick here but I can assure you it isn't once it's all stretched out. So here I am smoothing and stretching out my fondant. Fondant can dry out very quickly, so this is a process that needs to be done quite fast. Um, but you also need to take your time and make sure that you are not trapping any air underneath the fondant or that you are not pulling out too far uh, with the fondant and creating rips and tears or even elephant skin. Elephant skin is a term that us bakers use when the fondant does actually look a bit like elephant skin. Sometimes, as you can see here, the fondant doesn't look like it's going to stretch, but it will. You just have to trust the process. Now I've nearly gone round the whole of the cake. I start smoothing it down from top to bottom. And this fondant is going to cover the board as well as the cake. So what I will do is I will speed up the rest of this for you so that we can use, move on to the next section. So once I'm happy with how smooth the outside of the cake is, I then will trim off the excess and start using my smoothers to give a better finish. Once the outside of the cake is how I would like it, I then start to work on the board, which is what you can see here. I will then trim off the edge once again to make it a bit more tidier and once I have done that I will add a number one and a ribbon which unfortunately I did forget to film. Hopefully as I said practice will make perfect and I will get better at this. Um, until then I hope you still continue to join me. And now on to the white chocolate drip. This is a white chocolate dripping ganache which I have used the leftover ganache and added a bit more double cream to until it was the consistency that I wanted. And although I did film this whole process of doing the whole drip, as you can see here, because of how the cake is on the board, some of it is out of shot. So I didn't think it was worth putting the whole thing in. Once I've gone around the entire edge, I start to fill in the top. And then in a moment, you will see me get a spoon and I will start pulling the ganache away from the edge of the cake. That is to stop the drips from continuing down the cake, as I quite liked where they had reached so far. And then I'll smooth off the top a little bit and let that set while I add some sprinkles. I will speed this up again now though. We are nearly at the end of the process because after this I then added the toppers. Going along with this cake was 25 vanilla cupcakes with vanilla buttercream and sprinkles to match the top of this cake. You will see a picture of those in a moment, or an example, as there's only six in the photo. But you also see a photo of the finished cake with the toppers, the birthday boy's name, and some spare fruit to nestle in amongst the cupcakes. I can't wait to see what this one looked like set up at the party, and I will share it with you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, and hopefully you'll join me again.